question really, what has Christmas to do with business? And you might think it has nothing whatsoever to do, except, of course, Christmas provokes all kind of high street selling and so on. So from many point of view, it's a very important time for business people. On the other hand, there is a very important subliminal message to Christmas. And that if Christianity is true, which I fervently believe with all my heart, it's a message of God in his riches becoming poor for our sake, stooping really low, um, investing in us, and uh, at the heart of any business community is investment, invest, investing in the future. That's what Christmas says to me. It also says a great deal about value. You see, we live in a time when there are a minority. Richard Dawkins is talking about the selfish gene, that the way to get on is dog eat dog, and that kind of thing. And, and Christianity abhors that. We say the most important principle in life is to build community, is to cooperate, in, invest in one another. And that really is the heart of Christianity. The connection between profit and the glory of God doesn't look a very sort of apt thing at all. But on the other hand, um, we Christians have to acknowledge that for many, many years we didn't really believe in wealth creation. And I remember years ago thinking more about this and realized, realizing actually that very poor countries do not invest because they have nothing but poverty. It's only rich countries that can invest. So wealth creation is part of the Christian message. We've got to create wealth in order to share it. Of course, what is wrong with wealth is when we hoard it up for ourselves. And you may remember that in Jesus' parables, the one about the rich fool, who was so busy investing in himself and saving for himself, it was taken away from him. One day, he had nothing left. I think it's good that a, a, a businessman, businesswoman, should have ambition to get on, shouldn't feel guilt, guilty about making a profit. As long as we remember it's got to be shared with others. And you may remember, of course, the Bible tells us to aim for a tithe, a tenth, to go into other people, to support others. And that's a, a big challenge, of course, and we have to leave it to the individual. Well, I, all I hope, actually, that business people are successful in their business and to remember that part of it must go to help others. <laughs> Kingdom and many other parts of the Western world um, groping with uh, problems to do with corruption in business and so on. I think we've all been pretty shattered by that. It's really undermined uh, the banking industry particularly and there's certain things of course that need to be put right. We've obviously got to address the issue of corruption in business. Obviously alongside that there must be um, a, a fresh attitude to what we're trying to do in wealth creation that we cannot assume growth is going to continue forever in the way it's done so we need a less speculative attitude to investment and so on a much more of a concern on social welfare and bringing together the various philosophies of altruism and um, socialism and so on to care for the the weakest among us and that kind of thing in, in otherwise the chasm between rich and poor will get bigger and bigger but i want to add to that you see because as a, a christian work is such a wonderful thing and and the the best thing you could ever give to children and boys and girls leaving school going on to university is at the end of that um, investment in education, there will be a job waiting for them. It's no, when I was a young fellow, I remember leaving school at 16 and I, I was an office boy, that was my first job. But that was a time when there was full employment. Everyone could get a job, you'd have to be pretty thick if you couldn't get a job. Now, of course, it's very difficult to get employment in the United Kingdom. So I think that worries me indeed. And therefore, out of this could come a fresh attitude to work. 
It's wonderful to, to have a job, to do it with all the best of your ability, to realise you're serving the community. It's not just a selfish thing. So I think we've got to bring back into the workplace some of the old-fashioned les lessons, the Protestant work ethic. What made Britain great? It was a Christian approach to work, that everyone had God-given gifts and talents to offer the community. And if we could only bring that back again, what a tremendous investment that would be into our world. Around my way, where I live in England, Newbury, there's a great deal of unemployment, increasing unemployment now, and one's heart goes out to people who are fearful of lo losing a job. And there's no easy answer. You can't, I can't say, there, there, my child, everything will be all right because we know it doesn't work out. Life can be very harsh indeed. A couple of things though. First of all, if you're in danger of losing your job, fear is not the way to approach it. Uh, if we're taking a Christian approach to this, then turn that into prayer. Second thing is that this is where a Christian community comes into its own, sharing the problem with other people, asking in an unafraid way for their support in prayer to help and that rich Christian community can be a tremendous support for us all but there's no quick fix answer to this kind of thing. Sometimes you have to stay with the problem for a very long time before um, some resolution comes. I've got an American friend very high up in his industry which is in PR and so on He's been unemployed now for two years, but he's got such confidence that it's all, all going to come right, that he's holding on, and I'm sure he'll make good in the end. You know, I love this question very much indeed, because the Bible, of course, takes very practical things about things like riches and so on. The more verses in the Bible um, about poverty, about riches, then you would scarcely believe. I think there are at least 2,000 references to poverty alone. And when you think that Jesus' teaching was saturated with advice about wealth, about money, about storing money, about what the, where the kingdom of God is located and so on. Well, here are a couple of suggestions. I've written them down. Micah 6 verse 8. What does the Lord require of you, O man, or O woman. And it goes on to say, act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. And I think those three together, to act properly, be merciful, and to consistently walk with the Lord, that's such a wonderful thing. Or if you take uh, Colossians 3.17, whatever you do, do with all your might as pleasing the Lord Jesus. And that's a terrific passage that says actually that your enthusiasm to do it well to the best of your ability, that is what God requires. <music> the greatest spiritual danger, well, there are several of course. Um, complacency uh, might be one. You, uh, pride in yourself that you are doing a good job and you've got a good thing rolling for you and so on. These are some of the dangers. The important thing in business is actually always remember you're a servant and you're serving the Lord if you're a Christian, you're serving the community because you want the thing you're making to be the very best so a sense of pride in what you're doing is a very honourable and necessary thing but also a degree of humility it could go bust at any moment. There's always that risk, because risk is fundamental to any businessman. I've got a son-in-law who's in business. He's just taken over his father's jewellery business. It's a small business in Somerset. And I've seen this young man with lots of worries, realising what a difficult thing it is. I mean, he's very humble at the moment about it, because he realises there's so many risks attendant on it. But he's such a good worker that I'm sure it's going to be a problem. I'm involved in the United Kingdom in the Not Ashamed
crusade, really, because there is great evidence that Christians are being silenced in their workplace. We're being encouraged or being pressurized into pushing faith into a private area where it makes no noise and doesn't disturb people. And that's not Christianity. Christianity is a public faith. It makes an enormous difference on our world. In fact, actually, historically, we could prove this, actually. One of the great things that made Britain great compared to other, other parts of Europe or the Middle East is the power of the Christian faith on behaviour. So Christianity is a public faith which demands put into operation. So I'd say to people in their workplace, don't be ashamed of your faith, tell it as it is, but always remember courtesy, humility, um, and having a sense of humour is a wonderful thing. Don't ram your religion, your faith down somebody else's throat, but live it out, speak it out, and be sensible in it. I mean, this is where sometimes Christ Christians let the side down because sometimes they're intolerant, they are not reasonable, um, they're judgmental, and we've got to avoid that kind of thing.